Greetings and welcome back. This is your boy Kamal once again with yet another very interesting integral. Today we have the integral from 0 to pi of e to the 2 times cosine x dx. So the ingredients of the integrand are pretty simple actually. We have an exponential function and a trig function. Problem is that the trig function in question is the argument of the exponential function in question. And we also have a factor of 2 thrown in there. So, how exactly are we supposed to approach this thing? Well, first up, notice that we have cosine x, and we know that cosine x is an even function of x. So, cosine negative x equals cosine x. And that means we can write this integral as one half the integral from negative to positive pi of e to the 2 times cosine x dx. And now to reference some beautiful complex analysis. So how exactly is the cosine function defined in complex trigonometry? We have cosine z defined as e to the iz plus e to the negative iz divided by 2, which implies that 2 times cosine z, that's the argument of the integrand, of the exponential function and the integrand anyway, equals e to the iz plus e to the negative iz. And, of course, this implies that the target integral i can be written as one-half the integral from negative to positive pi of e to the e to the i x plus e to the negative i x dx. And we know how exponential function multiplication works, right? So we can expand the integrand as a product of two exponential functions, whereby we have one-half the integral from negative to positive pi of e to the e to the i x times, terribly, sorry about that, e to the e to the negative i x dx. And now to invoke a beautiful series expansion for the exponential function. We know that e to the z can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of z to the k divided by k factorial. And what I'm going to do here is now take this term and try to expand it in this series notation meaning that I need z here set equal to e to the negative i x, which means that we have e to the e to the negative i x expanded as the sum over k of e to the negative i x to the k, which of course means e to the negative i k x divided by k factorial. And now using the series expansion onto the target integral, we have i equal to one-half the integral from negative to positive pi of e to the e to the i x times the sum, terribly sorry about that. Yeah, I'm still not exactly getting good at writing this operator despite so much practice. Anyway, so we have the sum over k of e to the negative i k x divided by k factorial dx. And of course, the exponential function outside is independent of the index variable k, so we can slip it inside the summation operator. And this implies that we have i equal to 1 half the integral from negative to positive pi of the sum over k of e to the e to the i x times e to the negative i k x divided by k factorial dx. Now, the question of whether or not we can switch up the integration and summation operators is pretty trivial because we know that the target integral i is the integral from 0 to pi of e to the 2 times cosine x dx. So we're integrating a bounded function over a bounded interval. So we know it converges, and because the left-hand side converges, the right-hand side converges as well, meaning that the switch up here is completely justified, and we can write i as 1 half the sum over the non-negative integers k of the integrals from negative to positive pi of e to the e to the i x times e to the negative i k x divided by k factorial, but k factorial is independent of the x variable with respect to which we're integrating, so I'm taking it outside the integration operator. And now we have this integral to solve which isn't really very hard. All we need is the residue theorem, but before that we need a very nice transformation. We're going to let e to the negative, no wait, we're going to let e to the i x equal z. And this implies that e to the i x 
dx times i on differentiation equals dz. And this further implies that dx equals dz divided by i times e to the ix, and we know what e to the ix is, that's z, so we have dx equal to dz divided by i times z. Now, what about the limits of integration? Well, what we've done here is basically just write the complex number z in its polar form, so this means that the absolute value of z is the absolute value of e to the ix, which we know is 1, and the x variable here is the argument of the z variable, and it goes from negative to positive pi, meaning that the z variable traverses the unit circle centered at the origin. Okay, cool. So the integral is now a contour integral over the unit circle centered at the origin. And this means that we have the target integral i equal to 1 half the sum over k of 1 by k factorial times the integral over the unit circle centered at the origin. Uh, what exactly do we have? e to the e to the ix becomes e to the z. And we have e to the negative ikx, which of course is e to the ix to the negative k, which means it's z to the negative k. So that's what we have here, z to the negative k. And we also have dz by z and a factor of 1 by i outside. And of course this can be further simplified as 1 half the sum over the non-negative integers k of 1 by i k factorial times the integral over the, uh, the circle, the unit circle, times e to the z divided by, terribly sorry about that, divided by z to the k plus 1 dz. Now all we need is an application of the residue theorem. So the function f of z, that's our integrand, e to the z divided by z to the k plus 1, has a pole of order k plus 1 at the origin z equal to 0. So how exactly do we calculate the residue in this case? Well, for a pole of order n, and a function f of z, the residue at z equal to z naught equals 1 by n minus 1 factorial times the limit as z tends to z naught of the n minus 1 derivative, n minus 1th order derivative of z minus z naught to the n times the function f of z. So in our case, we have a pole of order k plus 1 of the function e to the z, terribly, sorry about that, e to the z divided by z to the k plus 1 at z equal to 0, meaning that we're interested in 1 by k factorial times the limit as z tends to 0 of the kth order derivative with respect to z of z to the k plus 1 times e to the z divided by z to the k plus 1. So we have some cancellation taking place, and the kth order derivative of e to the z is just e to the z, meaning we're left with 1 by k factorial times the limit as z tends to 0 of e to the z, which we know is 1, which means that the residue is 1 by k factorial. Okay, cool. And now we just apply the residue theorem, so we have this thing equal to 2 pi i times the sum of residues enclosed by our contour. In this case, we have only one residue, so this implies that i equals 1 half the sum over the non-negative integers k of 1 by i times k factorial times 2 pi i times 1 by k factorial we have some nice cancellation taking place, and this means the integral from 0 to pi of e to the uh, e to the 2 times cosine x, terribly sorry about that, dx equals pi times the sum over k of 1 by k factorial squared, which unfortunately does not have a very nice closed form like the other infinite series we encounter but it's still a pretty cool way of expressing the final result of this integral because, well, we have squared factorials and pi and whatnot, and this converges to, the right-hand side converges to approximately 7.16-something.
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. I hope you learned something from the video. And in case you like the content I'm putting out, in case you like the effort I'm putting into these videos, consider supporting me on Patreon. All links in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.